Uh, whoa! Wow! How's it going, guys? It's Timmy Joe. Make videos for computers on the internet. Finally, gonna figure out is the AMD Combat Crate worth it? How much does it cost to build a system around it? And uh, we got a nice new case from FSP, the CMT520 with some serious RGB action going on. We've got a nice power supply from them, modular. This thing is uh, got a cool basement situation going on. Some RGB fans, lots of airflow in the front, even though it's a glass panel. And then uh, we got some RAM from Ballistics we've already looked at. AMD Combat Crate, is it going to be worth it? Well, let's stop rambling. We'll do that build that I just reversed. Put your thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Oh, yeah, and then we're going to uh, make it happen. So, Timmy Joe, cue up those build logs, y'all. Well, it's not broken. FSP, you make some good glass. What's up guys, it's Timmy Joe making videos, we're back, I, uh, you know what, super impressed with the look of this case, how it fits together, an ultra premium experience here with the AMD combat crate and a really nice case, a really good power supply, we have the MSI stuff that's a little bit, you know, we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, we, I want to thank FSP for sending me out a uh, really awesome modular power supply, it's their Hydro GE650. Emma, uh, I just got to say that um, FSP stuff is stellar stuff. It is definitely worth your time looking at. It's available on Amazon. There's links below. This case, uh, although, you know, for, for like a brand that's not necessarily recognized, uh, it's $110. Uh, that might be pricey if, uh, you know, this was just some, you know, cookie cutter bullshit case. It's not. It is a very premium case that has a lot of interesting features, and I would say that it's, you know, low points are maybe the quality of the fans, or, you know, a little bit here and there, but for the most part, very stellar experience. And uh, we're going to go over the performance, we're going to go over this build, uh, I've already done all the benchmarks and stuff off, uh, you know, outside of this case situation, but uh, i got to say, this is a completely adequate motherboard. It is running uh, some RAM at 2666. It has uh, RGB light control. The fans are actually connected to it on here. And uh, you know what? It, it can't go wrong on a B350, you know, for, for the price. It's not bad at all. The MSI armor in here, however, is not what I would pick. It's going to be very limited by its cooler. It's so bad, it, it actually, you can hear it. It's getting very loud. It gets very loud, it's limited in its cooling potential, but this is an RX 580 and you can run this exact situation, 1080p games, max graphics, it pretty much had no trouble getting 60 frames a second in almost anything with this setup with the 16 gigs of RAM and everything. So it's running a fire strike right now, so we're kind of stressing things out. Uh, so uh, I guess we gotta stop, start kind of, um, you know, with the, the top, I wanna get the case out of the way. I'll do a full review of this case later on and maybe some more stuff with it, but uh, 
it, it's got lots of airflow. The, there's uh, several different uh, ways the, the air can come in in the front. It's not just like one of those squished front panels. There's actually some good air coming from the bottom and the sides. And it's got three big fans that are unfortunately plugged in via Molex. And uh, by default, they've got the uh, like the, the higher rail on it. I, 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 bump, I moved the Molex so that it was actually getting like the 3.3 volts instead of 5 or 7 or something like that. That way the fans would go a little bit lower because they were audible before. And they're pushing enough air to cool this system, no problem. Gets a real good, decent score of 13,266. And that RX uh, 580 is overclocked, as you know, far as I'm, you know, comfortably, you know, gonna let it with that cooler. And it's getting 16 graphics score, 16,000 in Fire Strike. And then, uh, you know, pretty much comparable, the CPU, the I uh, got it overclocked to 3.8. 75 gigahertz with this stock cooler at uh just 3.1.38 volts and it's doing awesome we got a total score of uh 13266 that is awesome that is very very good performance you could vr with this thing you could really you know do some productivity there's endless things you could do with this uh cpu uh we'll also show you here i ran uh with a 3.8 or yeah, 3.875 gigahertz, 1300 in Cinebench. So it's not doing too bad. Now, the first thing I would change personally on this is the CPU cooler. Now, it barely needs it. I mean, I almost got it at 3.9 gigahertz. It's doing pretty well, uh, but I had to put, set in a pretty gr aggressive fan profile on the Wraith cooler to really enjoy uh, where this ended up. Because it, it is kind of... It's iffy. If you replace the CPU cooler, you might get 3.95 gigahertz instead of 3.875. Is that worth it for an extra, you know, $50 CPU cooler? No, not really. But that's probably the first thing I would change at this. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's got some decent performance. We'll save that. Uh, and uh, all together in this case, I think it just looks so stellar and stunning. So you see the performance, and we'll get to some gaming benchmarks near the end here, but I did a little price chart for how much this system cost, and uh, it's just under a grand, 989.71. Uh, so uh, the combat crate for the 6-core uh, version is uh, 50, or sorry, 549, 548.99, basically. It comes with the... Uh, uh, motherboard, the CPU, and the graphics card. And that's a really good deal. I proved that in the last video. That's almost $100 savings depending on, you know, the time and whatever. Now, I put some very expensive RAM on this. You could get away with doing 8 gigabytes and cut some cost out. Also, there's, you know, RGB on this RAM too. For, you know, you could save 30 bucks probably and get the exact same kit of RAM just without LEDs on it. But, you know, I got to throw that up there. And uh, then this case is, you know, a little bit more expensive than some people might be willing to spend. Uh, you know, on a budget situation, but it looks so good. I'd akin it to like a Cooler Master case. It looks very similar to, you know, one of their cases or uh, Corsair's got a couple that look pretty close to this. It's very high quality. There's loads of cable management. There's a little uh, like uh, reflective acrylic cover for the uh, power supply down there, which I really like. Uh, because it lets you manage the cables from the top, then put that on there, and it's actually magnetically attached. There's little magnet strips that run on it, so you could take that out of there and play with your power supply, not have to pull it out the bottom, which is a huge, you know, issue I have with a lot of cases. Is if you want to do add another thing to your power supply, you're ripping everything out. It's annoying. This thing you gain access to it. And uh, speaking of power supplies, I got a modular one from FSB. It's a power supply that you could power a 1080 Ti on. You could power a very powerful graphics card. It has. You could probably run SLI with it, 650 watts, and it's Japanese capacitors. It's all that good stuff. A little bit expensive. It's 83.99. Available on Amazon. I highly recommend all of the FSB stuff, especially their power supplies. It's what they're known for. And then, uh, you know, just a couple little extra expenses. I got a 60 gig SSD, uh, and on Amazon and Newegg, this weird Tuscan SSD, which I have no problem. It's not called a Tuscan. It's a Sunbow. Sunbow. Uh, it's really good. It's actually, uh, you know, it's quick. 
way faster to load Windows on it than on a mechanical hard drive, and it's only $22.99, and then uh, the last bit is a 500 gig Barracuda Seagate, I get these on eBay for like 20 bucks each, and I just buy them in bulk, because I, I run so many computers through here and uh, that's like 20 bucks so all said and done you're just under a grand for what is essentially a 144 hertz 1080p gaming machine that uh, you could run it's got uh, you know free sync support obviously because the RX 580 in it it's an 8 gig version you will not have to upgrade this PC to play modern games for a while as long as you're not wanting to play at 1440p you know 144 hertz or uh you know 4k or anything but you could run 1444p on this if you tweak the settings down a bit and get some really good frame rates and uh yeah that's the uh, set and done so let's queue up some bench mocks and you want to see what the AMD combat rate at a thousand dollars this little build will do well i'm gonna show you <laughs> for allowing me to participate in their little combat crate uh, experiment. I think it is a wonderful program and it would be cool to see other manufacturers jump on board and do like an Asus branded or a Gigabyte branded AMD combat crate. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, it might be nice to maybe uh, be able to buy the next generation eventually or something like that and save 50 bucks by bundling it all together. But it's a super, super good deal. Can't go wrong with it uh you know especially in this time of uncertainty and graphics card prices and stuff i know everything's coming down now but the all the parts in here are a very good solution to a problem a lot of people were having as long as this stays in stock it is a very good option now that sh you know shitty cooler on the graphics card I, you could deal with it you could also you know people are saying water cool it or blah 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 no you don't buy that caliber of a card to you know stuff in a system like this and water cool more than likely you're going to keep it as is and it's adequate especially at stock but i overclock the card just a little bit further to get those results and in doing so you do have to set a fan profile that makes that thing audible uh, or you can underclock it just a little little bit and leave the fan on auto and you're gonna hear it in games eventually uh, But uh, the motherboards really decent no issues it loaded the memory profiles for a lot of kits I was uh, putting in there no problem the 1600 uh, I checked it will not do uh, 4 gigahertz. It does like 3.95. That seems to be what a lot of these non-X processors do. I put a good cooler on it for a minute just to see what it would do. And uh, it, there's that, there's a reason why there's a, the binning process and these are not the X version. It's the 1600. But it comes with a really nice little wreath cooler that's able to get like 95% of the performance out of it. So that's, that's pretty cool. So 
I, I like where I went with it. It looks really good. I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching the combat. Create lots of loads and loads and loads of content coming up on this channel. So if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. We're, we're pounding out the subscribers. I also have a Patreon. If you help me out on Patreon, it will help me, uh, you know, keep these videos coming and keep some older cool content coming. Uh, I, I'd appreciate it if you checked it out there. You can also buy this stuff through my affiliate link that helps me out greatly that is much appreciated and uh yeah just keep the conversation live and i'll be back with more videos later this week see you guys later Woo!